Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about this unusual asteroid known as Chariklo. This is an, an asteroid that is very very large and is actually known as a centaur and it has a very unusual feature that you're about to see. It's a very unique asteroid in our solar system because of this feature that's about to come into your view as I zoom out of the asteroid and there it is. It's an asteroid that has two rings. Welcome to What The Math and enjoy the video. <laughs> So not a lot of objects in our solar system actually have rings. We know that all of the gas giants have rings, and uh, it seems that at least two asteroids in our solar system do as well. One of them is called Chiron, and one of them is called Chariklo. Now this asteroid is unique in that it's not just an asteroid, but it's actually something known as a minor planet. J due to its size and due to its orbit, um, it's actually very large. Its diameter is about 286 kilometers across. And it has these two incredible rings that we've detected using um, spectroscopy uh, only a, a couple of years ago in 2014. So let's actually discuss this object in a little bit more detail using Universe Sandbox and possibly talk about the origin of, the, of these rings and speculate whether there's other objects like it in our solar system. And so here we are in Universe Sandbox Square. This is Chariklo, an object that was recently added to the Alpha 19 and actually has its own simulation as well, right here, known Chariklo with rings. Um, and basically, this object is kind of fascinating because of these two rings that you see orbiting around it. Now, let's actually first talk about the definition of this particular object. It's known as a centaur. Um, and the centaur, if you know anything about Greek mythology, is uh, a kind of a half horse, half human. Now, and that's because Chariklo, like many other centaurs, hasn't really decided what it wants to be. Uh, it might be an asteroid, it might be a comet, and it might be a minor planet. As a matter of fact, it possibly is all three, or even more. Um, it orbits uh, between Saturn and Uranus, and because of this, its uh, orbit is actually kind of unstable, because both Saturn and Uranus can influence its um, orbital parameters quite a lot, and at some point, it very likely is either going to approach the Sun and turn into a comet, or collide with another planet, or possibly even escape into the outer solar system and basically fly away forever. Um, this is why it's known as a centaur. It's basically an unstable kind of an object that is um, sort of uh, orbiting somewhere out there. We found approximately 40,000 of these objects so far, and this is actually one of the biggest, if not the biggest one we found. But what really makes it unusual is, of course, the ring system. And there, there is actually two rings here. Both of them are named after the Brazilian um, rivers. Uh, the bigger one is known as... Oyapoque, and the smaller one is known as Chui, and both of these um, are basically ice particles. They're sort of um, water particles orbiting around the somewhat rocky body. Um, the origin of these rings is currently not really well understood, but we think it's possibly uh, from three different sources, or one of the three sources. One would be a collision, so maybe something just kind of smacked into Chariklo at some point in the past and uh, created explosion and this created rings. So that's one possibility. Second possibility is that maybe, just maybe, this is actually an emission from Chariklo itself, possibly due to it being a comet at some point in the past, and, oh no, we're escaping the rings. No, come back, Chariklo, it's going to actually fly through its own ring system. Uh, so it's possible that uh, these emissions basically um, were from the surface of Chariklo due to the solar radiation. Oh, look at this beauty. It's making a smiley face, that's awesome. Ha. Huh. Didn't expect that at all. Uh, that's because all of these um, ring particles just kind of collided with the planet. Or not the planet, but the minor planet. And anyway, so uh, it's possible that this was actually the mission from the surface that created these ice particles. And uh, the third possibility is that this object actually had two moons orbiting around it, and at some point they collided and basically destroyed each other and created these two beautiful rings. So either one of these um, possibilities exists, but... My personal preference is that it's very likely that this used to be actually a comet and a lot of the ice and a lot of water escaped and started orbiting around it, which is actually something that happens to a lot of um, Centaur objects uh, anyway, so th it's very common for them to do that. Now let's actually go back to the original simulation here and uh, we need to take a look at what's uh, going to happen to these rings if we actually run the simulation a little bit and for some reason they do start approaching Chariklo and kind of almost hug it. Uh, I didn't really expect this to happen, but I think it's because this particular simulation is not perfectly balanced just yet. Uh, but there you go. This is what happens 
to these rings, and then they kind of just fly apart again, which is kind of cool. Um, so there's actually two objects that have rings uh, that are asteroids in our solar system. The other one is known as Chiron, and it's this object right here, and we can actually even add it to orbit um, Chiriclo, because why not? Uh, but in this particular simulation, Chiron doesn't actually have any rings, so we'd have to add them manually. But both of them are relatively large, and both of them um, actually do have rings. Now, the way we detected this, these rings is actually really interesting. We saw them by accident because uh, as Chiriclo was passing across the sky, um, it, the rings actually kind of blocked the, the starlight behind them, and we saw that there were two different rings, and it sort of happened like this. So let's just look at that, this star right here. And then it basically passes, it um, star disappears, star disappears again, then star disappears for a long time, and then star disappears two times again. So this is, it basically implies to us that there's definitely some kind of a ring system around Chariclo. And it's about to get another smiley face, I think. Or maybe not, maybe something completely different. This is because of the gravitational effects of Chiron on Chariclo. And these rings also kind of explain the fact that we actually have detected um, water ice on Chariclo previously, but then we also saw it disappear, and people were kind of not sure what happened to that water ice, until we realized that it's possibly that the water ice is actually inside the rings, and, oh wow, Chiron is really eating up all those uh, ring particles. Uh, but yeah, so it's actually, this is where the water ice is, and this is what we, were, we saw when we detected Cherry Claw. And so once in a while, uh, Cherry Claw kind of covers the water ice, and we can't really see it, but sometimes we actually see it um, quite, quite dramatically, quite a lot of it, because it, it sort of displays all of this toward us and toward our planet Earth. Now, what we know about these rings is that uh, they're not going to be super stable. As a matter of fact, it's very likely that... They're going to disperse within the next few million years and possibly disappear, which also implies that many other objects may have actually had rings as well, and those rings may have actually disappeared. Uh, the other thing that we actually know about these rings is that they're only about 7 kilometers and 3.5 kilometers in diameter, um, and um, they're not uh, that far away from Chariclo. So the actual radius here at uh, the farthest, which would be right here, is approximately uh, 400 kilometers. So it's about 400 kilometers away from, from the actual center. We need that if you were to stand on the surface of Chariclo, you'd actually be able to see these rocks orbiting around you in the sky. Well, and that's really all we know about this object currently, and this is all I wanted to talk about, but since it's a centaur, since it's actually an object that might end up um, colliding with one of the planets one day, let's assume that it actually does that to our planet Earth. So let's go to Earth, we're going to zoom into our own planet Earth, and let's assume that maybe one day Chariclo loses its orbit due to interaction with Saturn or Uranus, and ends up accidentally or possibly on purpose colliding with our planet Earth. So we're going to observe this happen right now. Um, this is actually a manually generated ring system because Chariclo, um, if you just add it, doesn't actually have any rings. But let's see what happens to those rings as we approach planet Earth at around 10 kilometers per second. And as this relatively small object, in comparison to our planet at least, decides to collide with it. Let's see what actually happens. Make a guess, and it looks like we're going to be visiting North America again. Possibly one of the western states. Am I looking at Oregon? Maybe Oregon. Or possibly Washington. I don't know. Let's find out. And so here we go. So just watch what happens to these rings as well as they actually start extending because they approach closer to um, our planet Earth and experience the tidal um, effects from our planet. Let's slow down a little bit more. And this is basically Chariclo, the asteroid that's approximately 116 kilometers in radius or 220-ish, 230-ish kilometers in diameter collides with our planet Earth, hitting uh, the ocean, I guess, right outside of California. Possibly creating a mega tsunami that destroys the world. And look at how elliptical the rings have become, actually. So first the rings will actually collide into the ocean, and then the rest of the asteroid will fall. It's going to be very, very beautiful, I'm guessing. Or not. Ha, huh, they just they kind of disappeared. And here comes a cherry claw. And look at this huge explosion. That is, that is humongous. Wow. All right. So that's definitely the end of our planet. Well, looks like I've destroyed Earth again. And so, yeah. Well, you know what? If you've enjoyed watching this, you might as well subscribe if you still haven't. 
or share this video with someone who might enjoy watching space videos and learning through video games. In the next video, we're going to learn something else and possibly play a video game. And uh, if you don't mind supporting this channel on Patreon, go and do it. The link for Patreon is in the description below. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. And hopefully in some f uh, sometime in the future, we'll discover more objects that actually have rings around them in our solar system and add them to the list of really cool objects to explore both in Space Engine, Universe Sandbox, and any other space game I discover in the future. I'll see you in the, in the next video. Game you later. Bye-bye. And I'm sorry, California, but I guess everyone here is probably dead. <laughs>